occasionally uh, you're going to get a system that uh, is going to put up a fight. It's going to be nearly impossible to repair. For me, it's about, about two or three times a year. For some of you with less experience and less electronic experience, it's going to be maybe daily or weekly. I've got one in the South Towns that put up a really good fight. I felt like I was punched a few times and uh, wouldn't clear. And the trouble would come in about every 5 to 15 minutes and then go away after 10 minutes. Missing device. Missing enunciator actually. And it's close to a uh, uh, substation, electrical substation, half a million volts, probably 1,000 watt, 1,000 amps whatever. Close to a radio station with 150,000 watts. So take a look at the clip and see what we did. It's going back to basics is what it is. That's what it comes down to. And uh, it's been clear now for about three days so I think I got it. But it was it was a follow-up. Yeah, I'd, I'd been there before and really struggled with it. And And some of these calls should really struggle with because it's in a traffic area, there's people everywhere trying to get stuff done. And um, on some of the older simplex stuff, you have to take it apart to find out what the address is. So lots of, and it was late at night. Before the trip before, it was late at night, so that didn't help either. Anyways, have a look at the clip. All right, so I think that is what has happened. So I've hooked up card 29, piggybacked it on top of um, the rest of the cards, and I've metered this, and sure enough, that's the, the Class A side of card 29. So this is where, I believe this is where our intermittence is coming from, and we'll know, we will know, because I just metered that, and it came up. So I'm going to hook up my meter, and sure enough, that's the other side of the card 29. So they've got a Class A on top of a Class A, and that for sure will cause that intermittent trouble. You can't do that. Okay, we have the Simplex 4100ES. Probably the best panel ever made. Probably 15 years ahead of anyone else. But if there's one weakness, it would be their customer connect. And you'll see in this shot, in the clips, the wires are way in the back, you risk shorting, make sure you have an insulated screwdriver if you're doing things live, which most of the time you are, because who's got time to go run to the breaker, run to the batteries, run to the breaker, run to the batteries, power up, power down. That's hard on the equipment as well, so you have to keep that in mind. If I had done that, I'd probably still be there, just running to the breaker, running back, batteries, etc. Now, Remote Unit Interface, RUI. Every Simplex panel has it, including the old Classics, the Enhanced, the, uh, the 4100U. They all have that, and it's right behind the main controller. So we're going to take a look at that. If you look inside of a Simplex panel, there's usually a ferrite bead laying in the bottom. Now, Simplex is the only company that's smart enough to supply ferrite beads with their panels, but a lot of the technicians do not appreciate them or fully make use of them. So this one's here, it's orphaned. I'm gonna use it on the RUI because I'm having issues, I'm having intermittent issues with the RUI. I already cleaned up this part of it and we still seem to have an intermittent issue on card 29. So I'm gonna put on this uh, ferrite bead and I'm hoping that that eliminates our issues. It's getting late in the day, it's like 5, 5 p.m. So it's time to get this thing fixed. Okay, the RUI, and that's what it's labeled, it takes care of your enunciators. It goes B plus, B minus, shield, A plus, A minus. Somebody goes out to their enunciator, on B plus and they come back on A plus. 
So they go out on B minus, and they come back on A minus. The shield was not connected. That took care of card 23 to 28. The only way I knew the addresses was to take the enunciator apart. So each card, I had to take it out live very carefully and check the address and put it back. And I could not find card 29. Card 29 was responsible for all of my intermittent troubles, which was uh, in trouble for five minutes about every 15 minutes. In and out, in and out. Now I went through all the pseudo points. I couldn't shut it off. Just give them some relief from the in and out and in and out. 24 hours a day for, I think, about two months. It was a long time. And it's not quiet, it's loud. Right in the lobby, traffic area, go to repair it, and there's people in and out, in and out. It's just, it's a nightmare. So what I found there, car 29 was, we never did find it. But car 29 was, let me use a different... Right, uh, car 29, SCU, failure, failed missing, intermittent. I'm trying to figure out the addressing on this. I can't seem to get a 29 out of this one. <clears throat> but I think I'm on the right one. 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24 is how I believe it is. Car 29 was on B+. Plus. And on B minus, and came back on on those two. So you you had what was um, a double class A loop, which is it, it's it's like trying to drive two cars at the same time. It just it doesn't work that way. I had this question way back when I taught I taught this course at the IBEW. He asked me why not have a redundant loop. Okay, you don't do that. You just don't. Like, what if this one is, um, what if this one is a thousand feet, and this one is, oh, 50 feet? Do you see where I'm going? Like, do you see how there's going to be some reflection there? Some electrical interference due to reflection, one signal taking longer than the other? It's just, it's a nightmare. Don't, whoever thinks this, don't do it. And obviously, people are thinking about this because it's being done. But I don't see it that often, so it's not a big, big deal. So I took the, I eliminated this double loop. Because all of these wires terminated at the panel, it wasn't that difficult to do. And then I added a ferrite bead, and I added the shield. Now the shield, I've got a green marker. The shield, you only connect it at one port one point when there's only one termination and that goes um, you don't break it um, you continue it and you do not tie it to ground and you do not tie it at both ends or well, you only tie it at one side and the idea is because you want to avoid ground loops or maybe call it a shield loop you want to you want to eliminate the possibility that if a, if if voltage does get in, induced into here, you don't want that to have a different a difference between this shield and say 100 feet away or 1,000 feet away. And keep in mind that this is close to an electrical substation. It's close to a radio station as well. So you're going to get interference. And most electronics nowadays have a lower lead content than in the, the enunciator was built in 1994. They had lead content, and we all know lead does a fair amount of shielding. Electronics today, no lead count, very little, it's zero lead count. So there's less shielding. I know, I know, that's, you might not buy that. It's a stretch, but it is true. Solder has zero or, or very little lead count. We fixed it. It's been clear for about a month now, or a week now. Sorry, it's been clear for about a week, so I think we got it. And I'm going to put it on a ferrite bead. And that, that should keep our noise minimized. And I'm hoping that solves our problem. Okay, now 
put that back. Now the shield is the shield's a bit of an issue, but watch what I do with the shield. Okay, it's not that pretty, uh, but it's going to be functional, I guess. And it's it's a practice to have the shield only connects at one end. It doesn't connect at both ends. Unlike a ground, you connect it at one end only. If you connect it at two ends, then you you risk the you run the risk of a ground loop, and we'll talk about that later, but connect it only at one end, and the shield should stay independent of the ground. clear let's hope it stays clear we're done gonna call it in